this is Andy Tube. In this video, I'm going to show you how to adjust the actual cam stack if it's causing binding or you have free play in it. This is the model 457 and I mentioned in an earlier video about adjusting the horizontal arm shaft for play that I was having binding um, in the machine at a certain point I could feel it hesitate and um, it's not it's not much but as I started dismantling the machine for cleaning I figured I would find it and I've taken out the needle uh, bar and uh, I checked that my new top gear on the vertical shaft wasn't causing it so I think I've located it here in the cam stack is adjusted a little too close to what's called the worm gear on the arm shaft and that's I think where I'm getting the binding so that's what I'm going to take a look at here and I'm filming it so if you happen to have this problem which is kind of rare I, I haven't had this very often at all but I have had it and that's why I, I think this is where it is on this particular machine. So let me reposition this in the camera and then I can uh, uh, show you what to do here. Okay, so, so you've maybe noticed that I have the front cover off here. The little uh, control panel piece of plastic. And if you don't know how to remove that, you can take a look at um, my video for replacing that top gear down in here on the uh, vertical shaft and it shows you how to remove that that panel um, this is a little uh, selection wheel for uh, a couple of different uh, cams that are in here one for zigzag and then multi-stitch zigzag and blind hem and it sits on top of the cam stack and I'm going to show you a picture I took back down in here uh, there is a worm gear on this horizontal shaft and it meshes with a gear that's on the bottom of this cam stack and that's what you're adjusting how how those two gears mesh and I think mine's adjusted a little too tight so let me show you that picture okay um, what what we want to do here is loosen this uh, top screw and uh, Singer basically says loosen this so that you can uh, turn the cam shaft okay and then they suggest you put a screwdriver down inside there because about an inch down in there is a screw at the top of the camshaft and and the camshaft itself is a little eccentric so when you turn it it kind of moves left it moves closer to the worm gear on the arm shaft and if you turn it to the right it, it moves a little farther but I'm going to go ahead and take this stuff off so that you can you can see uh, better what's down in here and I, I actually put this back on because I had it off to, to do cleaning when I realized hey I, maybe this is my problem this camshaft but you you just loosen that uh, put a put a screw driver in one of the slots I don't have a screwdriver big enough to go so I just put it on one side and turn and then when you loosen it when you take it off that's what it looks like and please take pictures as you go if you are not familiar with this little system here so you can get parts in the right sequence when you put them back on mm -hmm. Then there's this little selector spring that uh, when you turn it, you know, it pops back and forth between these two depressions when you do your setting. 
and that just lifts right off and you'll see the the spring is is let's see if I can get it at the good angle for the camera it's bent down a little bit and of course it's got a little button on it to go in the depression so when you put it back on that button's going to go down then the rest of these parts just pull straight up and they might be sticky uh, you know from oil and grease and dirt and stuff but if you wiggle them uh, you can usually twist them and wiggle them and you can pull this plastic dial straight up like this and underneath you can see the different uh, the, the, dif the different mm, I guess this is kind of matches up with the cam and this is for the selector dial and so forth but you see that it's got this little keyhole and that's to go on this little pin that sticks up from the camshaft okay and remember to take pictures then you've got your two cams here and they they're gonna come off the same way they're they're um, just pushed on and they have a little keyhole slot that goes over the pin and uh, sometimes these are even harder to get off than the wheel let's see if I can just gently go under here and just gently yeah just gently lift them up a little bit because you can't turn them much left and right here this one's coming off this smooth one on top does go on the top right so you're taking your pictures just to show you the bottom of this so it's easy to remember the top is smooth and the smooth uh, goes up then this is your uh, standard zigzag cam number one you see this on almost every zigzag machine singer made and you see the little zigzag pattern and you'll see a circle with the number one over there and you see the keyhole I'm talking about for the pin right so it goes on first and it goes with the zigzag pattern facing up okay um, so here's the top of the camshaft with the with the pin and everything and down inside here is the adjustment screw and it's it's show you about how far down that is it's about that far down inside and I'm not going to be able to get a good picture of it but you'll be able to see just with the lighting in your work area you'll be able to see the slot is just for a straight bladed screwdriver okay and that's what you turn but uh, when it's adjusted you keep it in place by this set screw that's down in here at the base of that cam stack it's up above the gear the cam stack gear is down in here and this is the set screw that holds the cam stack in place okay and when you when you're making these adjustments you're supposed to keep keep it in the center you know left center right which which is hard to do when you, when you have the control panel off because there's nothing to keep it there but you're also ha supposed to have your width width selector switch all the way to the left or zero which is straight stitch so you want straight stitch center position but I don't worry about the center position too much uh, the reason they want you to do that is because this is the um, uh, arm that follows the pattern on the cam and, and moves the needle bar driving arm to swing the needle back and forth. And when you put it in zigzag, you see how it wants to drop over against the cam. And when you put it in straight stitch, it, it moves it away from the cam and then by having it in center it even moves farther away 
but the main thing is to keep it in the left position here so if I tilt the machine up there's the uh, set screw position and I'm gonna just go in there and I loosen that set screw now uh, turn this around till I find and it's it's a straight it's a straight um, <clears throat> there we go it's a straight slotted set screw takes a regular straight blade screwdriver tip okay so I've got that free now and it's ready to adjust and you know what now that I got all this parts up here off I'm gonna take another picture back here hopefully you see a little more clear the worm gear that is on this um, horizontal arm shaft and how it mates up with the gearing at the bottom of the cam stack. Let me show you that. Okay, so when, when you turn your hand wheel and you rotate uh, stuff, you, you're going to see the cam stack is turning and the arm shaft is turning up here and uh, I'm going to actually turn my, I got, I have my hand wheel off, so I just put the little chrome knob on here, but to use it I have to turn it backwards. You would be turning the hand wheel towards you to test for binding, which would make the camshaft uh, rotate clockwise. So when you see it going counterclockwise, it's because I'm turning the shaft backwards, but you, you can see the uh, worm gear turning because the shaft is turning and because the worm gear goes to the gear on the camshaft you can see the cam stack stack rotating okay so it feels it's it still gets to that one point where I feel binding and it's right here in my rotation okay and like there's other stuff that can cause binding but I've got I've got the motor belt off, I've got the uh, timing belt off, I've got the needle bar out, all that kind of stuff. I've looked at all the linkage for the feed and everything below. So uh, this is what I'm going to check. Now whatever position the screw is in, it stays there. So the slot is going to be in whatever position and, and it does not rotate. So what I do is I just kind of take a straight edge, I look down in there, and I line up my straight edge as best I can with the slot in the screw. Okay, then when I get it lined up, I, I take a, a sharpie, a marker, and I make a little mark on the edge of the casting here so that if I w want to go back exactly where it was I don't have to guess at it I can use my straight edge and line it up and return the adjustment screw to the original position because maybe this isn't the binding and if this isn't causing the binding, then everything worked before where the screw was. I just want to put the screw back in the position. Okay. So we've got the we've got the set screw loosened. We got this to the left. I still have when I when I turn my wheel, I still have the binding. So here's how you adjust this, okay? If you put your screwdriver in there, get it in your slot. If you turn it all the way left, and it's not going to be far. Now, now you see this wants to start moving. So that's why you, you hold it in place in zero width or straight stitch because it, it wants to move when you turn the camshaft. So I'm just going to hold that in place. I'm going to turn my 
screwdriver to the left and that's it you, you see how you see how little that moved maybe not it's hard, it's hard to see that it moved at all but it does you turn it all the way left you don't have to like tighten it or anything just move it to the left until it stops and what that does is is push the cam stack closer to the arm shaft so it meshes the gears tighter okay and you will see if you if you try and if you try and rotate the hand wheel now if you if it will move it will just move barely I mean you know it's just like jammed or stuck so so that's the tightest position okay and then when you start turning your screwdriver back to the right it starts moving the camshaft farther away from the worm gear and that's how you get a, a looser mesh now I'm going to move it quite far with the hopes that you can see the camshaft swing away from it and, and I'm, whoop, let me hold, hold it back in zero because it wants to pop out I forgot to hold my width lever so okay it actually swings to the left now if I turn it right it swings tighter so I had the motion reverse but when when you turn left it does it moves this cam stack closer to the gear that's back in my far left position the tightest mesh as I turn right the cam stack swings away from the gear loosest so what you want is starting with it fully meshed to where nothing moves you want to start moving it a little bit to the right until you start getting some movement okay now I have movement but it's definitely hard it's binding I can tell that's that's different than the position I started so I'm gonna move more to the right past the original position and see and you know what it's it's looser it's easier to turn this now and I'm not feeling the binding in that one position so I think this was adjusted a little bit close now the deal is how far to the right do I want to go and basically when you start with this turned left and as tight as you can make the mesh when you start turning to the right you want to get to the position where it's easy to turn with no binding and that's where you want to stop okay and you can go past that point and see if it gets easier to turn but it's really not it's really not going to get easier to turn even if you go past the sweet spot look I can go way over here and I can I can turn stuff and it's it's not any easier than the first spot I found and what that's going to give you is a loose mesh of the gears and less of the gear are going to be mated and you don't want that you don't want that kind of play you don't want a loose mesh so I'm gonna go I'm gonna go back all the way to the left where I can't move start moving it now there's my original position as I line up on these two marks I made that's about where it was when I started yes and I have that little binding at a certain spot the same spot and I can tell it's the same spot because I watch this eccentric piece come up and go down come up and go down come up and go around 
and it's always just as it comes up from the back to the peak that stuff binds. Then when I when I get past that, it doesn't bind anymore. See? Then when it comes back around, starts to come up. There's that little point right there where it binds. So I'm going to go past that adjustment a little bit and I'm going to try it now. Yep, I still I, I still barely have a little bit. I'm going to try and nudge it just oh, so tiny tiny amount. And these these adjustment increments are small, you know. So now turning the hand wheel or the arm shaft both ways, it's equally free. I don't I don't have any uh, binding that I can feel. Okay. So to make sure I didn't go. Um, well, let me go a little bit more and see if it changes anything. I'll go a little bit more to the right. No, it doesn't. It's not any easier. I mean, it's not binding, but it's not easier because it's still moving all these mechanisms and arms. So I don't need to go that far to the right. So I'm going to nudge it back a little. Okay, that feels good. I'm going to nudge it back just a tiny amount. It still feels good. Just a tiny bit more. Okay, now I'm starting to feel the binding. So, I'll move it back to the right, that minuscule amount. No binding so far. Turn it the other way. No binding. Okay. I, th I think that is a better spot. Because I don't feel binding. But if I moved a little bit to the left, I started to get that binding. So I moved a little bit back towards the right. And it feels good. Now Singer says to make at least one full rotation of this um, uh, of the camshaft you know to check for binding all the way around so if I still had my motor belt on I would just slowly run the motor and see how it felt and how it sounded you can do it by hand but you know 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 you get the idea you know, it's about 50 turns to make one full revolution, but it's worth it so that you only do this once. Just keep turning and keep turning and make sure that you are free of the binding. And it's really best to start, you know, mark where your screw is now by putting a ruler over the slot and marking the body up here and then turn it all the way left until it binds and you cannot move anything and then start going back to the right in little increments and you'll see it's getting easier to turn easier to turn and when you feel your binding stop that's your sweet spot now if you were very loose in here, you could be way past your sweet spot and not know it because when you when you turn the hand wheel, everything will go, oh yeah, I, there's no binding here. Well, it's easy. But if you hear funny noises when you're sewing, little clicking and stuff, that could be the gears being too loose and losing their mesh completely. And you can also get surging uh, when you're sewing along and you increase speeds you can hear your motor go 
because it's starting to slip you're so loose okay so that's why the best way is is go in turn it all the way left till it's totally bound up and then start turning right and checking yeah a little bit of binding yeah a little bit of binding eh, oh hey that feels smoother go a little bit more right yeah it's didn't get any smoother go back yeah that feels pretty good go back a little tiny more uh oh I'm starting to feel the binding so get that sweet spot and you will be good now I'm gonna put my ruler up here on and line it up with my new position Whoop, let me get my pen I'm gonna line it up with my new position so that I can okay there's my old line up right there I'm gonna move it to my new line up and I'll just mark this bottom one okay I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see oh yeah okay so you see these these two marks this one on the right was the original lineup of my screw slot now my new one is on the left so I definitely moved the screw to the right by a little tiny amount but wow it's it moves so much smoother now in both directions of turning the hand wheel very nice so I think that I think that was it I think somebody had just adjusted it a wee bit tight and that was an adjustment it might have been that way from the factory I don't know it might have been that way all of its life because this adjustment usually does not have to be made when a machine is very old the gears can actually wear down a little bit and you start getting some play in them so somebody could have uh, you know adjusted them a little bit tighter but the rest of the machine doesn't show that kind of wear and tear so I, I don't know how it got in the binding position but I don't care because it's gone now now the first thing I want to do is go back to my set screw and tighten that up so my new gear mess position does not turn okay and then I'm just gonna check if you watch my videos you know I like to double and triple check yeah I just don't have that binding anymore and I don't have play so I'm in the sweet spot I'm happy with that okay so now of course you would and I and I kept myself in zero or straight stitch position when I'm making these adjustments okay because you don't you don't want to have it anywhere into zigzag with with this over because you may have already moved the needle bar driving arm position then when you put this all back together this may be your zero position now <laughs> you know like like zigzag number two or one and a half so that's why when you're making the adjustments you always want to keep this over to the left in zero width okay so with with my adjustment made that I'm happy with I put my parts back on and if you remember my my zigzag cam goes on first and I put the keyhole over the pin and I gently work it down of course this would be a good time to clean everything right but I, I make sure it's flat okay and I make sure I'm in zero to keep this pin see when you go into zigzag well let me let me turn it a little bit this is the follower arm and when you go into zigzag you'll see that arm move over against the cam See it, see it click over and that's what follows the pattern you want see it going in and out there 
The bottom of that follower moves the needle bar driving arm up to the vibrating bracket. Boom, boom, boom. That's what makes your pattern. So anyway, got that in zero. Got my first disc on. Have the top disc here with the not smooth side down and the smooth side up like so. I'll put it on there. Okay, nice in place. Okay, then I have to put my selector wheel on there over the keyhole. Right. <clears throat> okay, and as far as I remember, it doesn't matter which position you put the spring in. Okay, yeah, maybe that's why in the beginning where I said Singer said just to loosen this uh, you know lock screw just loosen it so that you can turn the cam <laughs> and I said I'd take it off and take the spring off because I wanted to show you <laughs> then you wouldn't have to worry about this but when, when I look at my cover arm cover you will see the standard position for regular zigzag is on the left. So when you turn the dial to the left, that's putting that selector arm or follower arm at the height of the zigzag cam. Right? Okay. So that's that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn the wheel left to the zigzag position. Then I'm going to put my spring on here over the key, the little pin, and that's going to put my uh, selector spring in the left position. And that's where I'm going to tighten it. And if I got it wrong, I can loosen this top retaining screw and move my pin over to the right but we'll know if it's a zigzag by putting it in zigzag width and turning the hand wheel and see if my needle bar zigzags back and forth regularly or if it only zigzags about every fifth needle stroke Okay, once you put that on, then just uh, just tighten it up firmly. How tight you tighten this determines how hard it is to turn this wheel. So if your wheel's real floppy, tighten this more. If your if your selector wheel or disc is very hard to make the selection, then loosen this a little bit more. That's why they have the depressed area and the button on the spring. So it doesn't have to be real tight or hard to move. This feels pretty, you know, firm, but easily to move. So I think I'm in a good spot. Okay. And easy to adjust if I'm not. So the first thing I did, let me get my tilting block out of there. The first thing I did when I got to where I wanted to be was tighten my set screw. Then I put my two cams back on my selector put my two cams on the stack, my selector wheel, the selector spring, put this to the left and tighten it. Now I'm not going to be able to check my needle bar for you right now because look I've got it out. Well I guess I could watch the the vibrating bracket move. Let's see. I'll put this uh, width all the way over to five. Let's see if I can get this in a position where we'll see if it can move here. Is this even going to work? Okay, there's going back and right away coming forward and going back and coming forward. So that's regular zigzag. So I, I put this stuff up here on right. If I move it to the blind hem position, then when I, when I uh, turn my hand wheel, this should go back 
and stay a few turns and then pop forward and then go back and stay a few rotations and then pop forward come on back Oop. Wait, why isn't that doing it oh maybe because I'm not in left center right there it is okay so it's about five or six needle bar strokes and then it makes the zigzag which is what's described here on the blind hem uh, pattern you know a zigzag and then straight 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 zigzag and the regular zigzag of course is zigzag zigzag and that's what it did so I feel like I got the adjusting spring or the positioning spring up here in the right place by turning the wheel left when I put the spring on all right so that is adjusting for mm, binding or free play in the cam stack on a Singer model 457 and you you will see a lot of these uh, stylists and fashion made machines that have um, this selector and even a regular zigzag machine with only one cam is going to have this this kind of a setup where you can loosen the set screw because that's what you loosen to take it to take the cam stack out you can loosen that and you can turn the screw down on top of the camshaft to move the cam gear closer or farther from the worm gear on the horizontal arm yeah I'm pretty I'm pretty happy that's that's smooth and see when this when this uh, eccentric comes up to the top now it doesn't hesitate it feels the same all the way around so I'm very happy with that. Thanks for tuning in uh, to this video about the camp stack. And thanks for watching my channel whenever you do. I've got over 400 videos. You can go to my home page and see my videos. And my playlists are by model numbers. So if you're looking for a specific model number, you can look at the playlist and you'll see all the videos I did for that model. Thanks again. Take care.